Today we're going to talk about how to launch your own product line as a creator or influencer. I'm Justin Moore. Welcome to Creator Wizard, your step-by-step -step guide to the business of being a creator. In this video, you're going to learn why launching a product line can be a critical step to diversifying your creator business, common pitfalls to avoid when selecting what to sell, and the best way to approach selling something to your followers. Before we get started, don't forget to click the link down below to get a downloadable checklist of my top money management tips for creators. So today we're going to be speaking with Brie Islar who recently launched the Brand Builder Studio. Welcome, Brie. Hi, Justin. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for joining us. So to start off, can you talk a little bit about uh, the type of content that you make on social media and you know, talk a little bit about why you decided to launch a product line? Yeah, so first of all, thank you so much for having me on. I really am so excited to chat with you. Um, I am a little bit of a mommy blogger slash... Um, I really like really try to inspire women. Um, my journey started on social media 10 years ago. Actually, I launched um, my YouTube channel in February of 2010. And uh, over that period of time, my content has changed. Um, it's grown with me throughout the years. Um, so I do a little bit of like mommy blogger content. Um, I share a little bit of my family and then also I just do a lot of inspirational posts and um, encouraging other women who are interested in the entrepreneurial journey to kickstart their journeys and get started. That's so fantastic. And so, you know, having been on social media for, for a long time and have seen kind of the evolution of a lot of the different ways in which you can monetize as a creator, uh, what, what is, can you talk a little bit about why you decided to, decided to go down this journey of, of launching a product line? To be honest, when I started YouTubing way, way back, um, within the first year of launching, one of the things that I really, really was passionate about doing was started my own makeup line. Believe it or not, it was something that I wanted to do from the very beginning. Um, because actually at that time I was also, I was a full-time teacher and then I was also a freelance makeup artist on the weekends. So um, two to three weekends out of every month, I was doing different kinds of gigs from bridal to you know special events and proms and birthdays and things of that nature. And for me during that time, I was always asked by my clients. Um, back then it was really about eyeshadows. Um, if I had any eyeshadows that, you know, I thought would be really good for them, um, mm -hmm. for them to have on their, you know, in their own uh, toolkits, if you will. And then also lip colors. A lot of my clients wanted um, customized lipsticks, custom lip colors. And so back then I would mix colors and put it in little containers and leave it with them for them to touch up their makeup after I finished. And so over that period of time, I had always wanted to launch a makeup line. This was something that I wanted to do from the very beginning. I was inspired by so many other YouTubers um, who were in the beauty community who also launched um, makeup collections and makeup lines. And uh, like I said, over the years, things just kind of happened and the journey kind of took its fair share of pivots. Uh, mm -hmm. So I wasn't able to do it as soon as I would have liked to. And then to be honest, um, that's part of why my content is so inspirational is because for a period of time, I kind of thought it was no longer something that I could do. I kind of um, talked myself out of it. Uh, I became a mom and um, my daughter, my oldest daughter was born with special needs. And um, I just was really focused on mom life and kind of let myself and my dreams go. I kind of let them go, um, you know, off to the wayside and didn't think it was something that I would be able to do anymore um, until the end of 2019. I really decided to, you know, go back and make a make a chance and take a chance and go for it. Good for you. That is super inspirational. And, and I think I think that resonates with a lot of people, which is like you've got these dreams, but you know, life has other plans, right? Exactly. <laughs> right? And, exactly. and, you know, you really kind of have to roll with the punches. And so for you to have the fortitude to go back and, and chase after your dreams, I think is, is fantastic. And, and, you know, you're really to be applauded for that. And, and, you know, I think, I, I think it's a great seg to talk about this thing I hear a lot from creators, which is just that, how do I even start? <laughs> right? Like, I, like, I don't even know how to begin, right? Like, it's one thing to launch maybe like a, 
Teespring store, you know, like merch or something or, or on Bonfire, you know, one of these stores that does fulfillment for you or slap your logo on it, um, you know, and that kind of thing, right? So can you talk a little bit about how you even started? Like, you know, like, well, first of all, like, why did you um, decide to kind of double down on beauty products? I mean, you have, you know, this experience in, in the past having done this. And so were you always like, okay, this is definitely what I'm going to do? Or did, did you have a broader vision? Like, oh, I want to do skincare or like, a, or were you ever like, I don't really know what to start with? Initially, I was, uh, it was always, always in my heart to do makeup. Um, and then I, I kind of talked myself out of it and kind of backpedaled out. And I was like, okay, well, I'll do skincare. Um, because after becoming a mom, I wasn't wearing makeup as much anymore. And so I got really good with my skincare. Um, I had a really good regimen. I suggested some really great products to other people. Um, and I was, you know, really thinking that I would go into that route instead. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's still on the table, to be honest. I do still uh, want to go that route as well. Um, but I kind of just felt the need to really push myself in the direction of beauty as it pertains to makeup because as a black woman um there were not a lot of or actually there weren't any that i can think of uh, black owned makeup companies when i started youtube and so wow. i wanted to be a face um, that represented women that looked like me or deeper complexioned um, to provide a product that was um, beautiful for them as well. Um, I think at the time, uh, I found myself being uh, pitched to work with other brands as a creator um, to showcase other beauty products for other companies, but nothing really suited people who were, not, if you were even a little bit darker than I am. I wouldn't have been able to reach you with the content or the products that were being offered to me to showcase on my channel. And so it was really important to me that I would be one of those people who would be able to share products with women who look like me, um, who look like my mom, who was actually really, really uh, much darker than I am, I should say, um, so that I had more of um, an opportunity to showcase products for women of color. So that was really um, why I wanted to continue um, in the direction of beauty as it pertains to makeup. Super interesting. And I've heard that story so many times that social media has really democratized the ability to uh, find people that are just like you, right? Or like, or find people, you know, if you go into a drugstore, you go into a, a, a department store, you know, oftentimes it's hard to find products that connect with you. I mean, April has said that before, you know, with her, with an Asian complexion, like it's it's somewhat difficult, um, not just for makeup, but other products, right? Like, Yeah, it, it's, for sure. Right, right, exactly. And so, um, like one thing that is very interesting to me about your messaging and your marketing for the brand is that it seems like you were very uh, intentional about the audience that you chose, right? Like you say in some kind of like your marketing copy, like people who are bold, who are unapologetic. Um, you know, is that kind of how you sought to to differentiate yourself from other beauty brands out there? Or, or how did you think about like messaging? Um, for sure, I, I wanted the messaging to be as authentic to who I am as possible so that it wouldn't be um, a job really for me. It would just be um, a continuation of a hobby that I really, really love that was actually profitable. Um, so uh, for me, before leaving my job as a teacher, which was the highlight of my life, I found that I really didn't ever feel like I was going to work, right? I really love kids. I love working with the kids. I loved working with the parents for the most part. Um, and so <laughs> I really, really enjoyed my job and becoming a mom and um, the school that I taught at closed. Um, so yeah. for me, when I was teaching to go into a different area and make that transition, whatever that I have done over this tenure and, you know, this journey for me had to have been something that continued to bring me the kind of joy that teaching did. And so for me, um, I am very outspoken. I am very unapologetic. I am very, um, bold with my messaging. I am very intentional about what I share, how I share it, and you know the message to whom I'm trying to share it with. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I really wanted it to be something that, um, because one one thing that has happened over the last 10 years is that there are other Black-owned beauty brands now, right? There are so many other um, entrepreneurs who have launched amazing companies like Fenty and you know some really amazing Black-owned brands. And so, how could I stand out? What what things could I do? Um, to complement what I offer, but also um, speak to a specific audience. 
Um, the Crayon Case is another one that I'm really, I'm really inspired by. She's uh, another black owned business owner and she's very bold with her messaging as well. And it just um, inspired me and let me know that it is okay to um, go into a direction that may not be as normal as everyone else. But one of the most important things for me um, with the Brand Builder Studio was that I wanted it to um, still look like a corporation. Like I didn't want it to look like it was something that is being, you know, processed from my home. You know, mm -hmm, I, I mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that um, there was an experience. Um, and even, you know, we've only, it's only been a little over a month since we officially launched, um, but we're definitely working even now to continue the experience of luxury um, as a black owned business as well. So I definitely wanted to make sure that it spoke to a certain demographic, um, the messaging was specific to a certain demographic. And that's not just black women, um, to be honest with you, Justin. I'm really excited to work with all women. Um, yeah. But I, I'm very proud to be a black woman who is able to do this. So it, right. it's just been an exciting journey so far for me. Absolutely. And and so, I mean, given that, you know, the launch is, is still relatively fresh in your mind, um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about some of the obstacles that you faced in the process of, of launching the brand, right? <laughs> right, like, you know, if you um, had to think back on like everything that you had to go through to get to this moment, like, are there some things that stick out in your mind of like particularly difficult circumstances that you had to overcome? Oh man, so to be honest, there, there, <laughs> there have been more obstacles thus far than anything. Um, I, I handle it all myself. Um, so I do the branding, the graphic design, the marketing, um, I did the website, the logos, just everything that um, has um, encompassed the Brand Builder Studio up until this point has been me. <laughs> My husband said he would help me uh, with packaging orders, which have been amazing as well. But even that with the shipping and the processing of all the orders and just the whole thing has been me. Um, and I would say that one of the biggest obstacles that I had was, like you said in the beginning, I just I didn't know where to start. Um, as a beauty blogger, I've seen other creators, you know, as the faces of brands, you know, who, you know, sold a lip gloss or, you mm -hmm. know, some type of product, um, but they just took the pictures, you know, someone else handled all the marketing <laughs> right, and all the right. stuff. And so for me, one of the reasons actually why I didn't think I could do this was because I didn't think I would be able to figure it all out. Um, and on top of everything, I actually am a lupus survivor. I have lupus. And so my health has just been, um, I would say the biggest obstacle because I'm exhausted a lot. Um, it's just been really, really physically taxing because I would be up all night. You know, I'm a full-time mom during the day. I'm a wife for a few hours if I can. And then <laughs> I go into this mode of like building this brand, you know, really trying to work really hard to build a business. And so I would be up for five o'clock in the morning, oh, several nights um, at the beginning of this year up until July or August. Um, it was just a really long journey um, of, you know, researching. I wanted to also make sure that I was offering products that um, were unique. And so I did a lot of market research to just see what other companies had out there, what was available to people at the time. Um, and I also wanted to make sure that I created a business model that was sustainable for me um, mm -hmm. in the products that I chose for our initial launch and then actually creating other product lines um, to continue to further the brand. So there were just so many learning curves, um, but I pride myself on being a DIYer. Like I love to DIY. I love to figure it out um, because it affords me the experience and the opportunity to apply my knowledge to another opportunity or another um, idea that I have in the future. So um, I was doing graphic design for a long time for a couple of uh, small businesses and I used that information and that experience to do graphic design for myself. I've worked, I actually have a consultancy. I work with um, other creatives and help them with their branding and marketing as well. So cool. I use all of my knowledge to compact and you know, come into play for the Brand Builder Studio as well. Right, so how did you, find the manufacturer to begin with? Like how, how like I think I, a lot of creators ask like, okay, they, they understand like Teespring and all those things with the, with the vendors, well, they'll do fulfillments for you and stuff like that. But how, how, when you try to make a custom product, like where, how do you look, do you Google it? Like, like what do you, what do you do? <laughs> 
So luckily for me, I had a couple of friends in high places who gave me some really good advice and mm -hmm. um, gave me some information about some labs. Uh, back in 2000, I want to say maybe 13 or 2012, um, a good friend of mine gave me some information about a lab. Um, and she told me, you know, how to get in touch with some people. Unfortunately, the people that she gave me to get in touch with were no longer with the company. Oh. Um, so I kind of had to really, Google became my friend. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that the products that we offer with the Brand Builder Studio are paraben free. Um, I, like I said with lupus, my skincare is a huge part of how I stay healthy. Um, you know, just making sure that I don't put any toxic products on my skin. And so mm -hmm. um, if it's not good enough for me, then it's not good enough for anyone else. And so I right. started to really research companies and um, find manufacturers and labs who specialize in um, hypoallergenic products, um, toxic free products. Just, I, I really, I felt like I was in school, to be honest. I, I became a student of the game, <laughs> you know, just really <laughs> looking around and trying to um, maximize my time because I knew that this was something that I wanted to launch at a specific time. And I'm not sure if I, um, I'm not sure if you saw the post, but I shared that I wanted it to launch in October. Um, and the very first launch for our company was the Pinky Winky Lux collection, which um, pink is the color for breast cancer awareness month. October is the 10th month of the year and the 10th year of my journey as a brand builder. And so I wanted to make sure that as I was doing all this research, um, that I was able to have everything done at July. July was the time when I wanted things to be, you know, starting to get processed and, you know, put together so that August and September, I could really finalize things and fine tune them. And so that I would be able to launch on time in October. And Man, so, so you, yeah, you I just, really held yourself to that to that I, deadline. Yeah, I, <laughs> my friend, I took a course over the at the beginning of um, this year, and they had like a personality um, quiz, and I was labeled a taskmaster. <laughs> it said <laughs> that like I make like lists and like check things off, and it's mm -hmm. true. I I'm I think it's the teacher in me, and I think April yeah. and I have talked about it. Like once a teacher, always a teacher. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just the skills that you learn. They, they carry on with you long mm -hmm. after your teaching, you know, tenure is over. So, yeah. I wanted to ask you about the logistics of getting a, a company to, to work with you, right? Because I know a lot of these companies have like minimum order requirements or a certain volume limit or something. And I've heard a lot of creators say that that's a capital constraint, right? Like they don't have the money to invest in a thousand piece run or, or something like that. And so I know some creators will do like, they'll like pre-launch it or something, right? So they'll tell their creators like, oh, or they'll tell their followers like, oh, you know, I'm gonna be launching this thing. Will you support me? It's kind of like Kickstarter type thing, like pre, pre launch type thing. Um, so did you ever consider doing that? Or like, like how did you, how did you make it happen for the initial runs? So I didn't consider doing a pre launch because I wanted to have tangible products for promo and for mm -hmm. marketing. Um, and then I also wanted to make sure that before I sold it and put my name behind it, that these products were what I wanted them to be. Um, and then I didn't want to have, I didn't want to run the chance of having there be some type of backup or, you know, some type of hold up with processing or shipping taking forever and things of that nature. Um, so one of the things that I did when I was um, starting the journey of launching was I only, uh, one of the first questions that I would ask when I reach out to different um, companies was, are you able to provide or um, fulfill minimum uh, quantity orders? And so I made sure within my budget that the quantities that were required in order for them to even process an order were within my budget. Um, and then actually start out really small. So one of the biggest tips that I would give to people is um, require or request a sample order and get a couple of samples of just like prototypes that they offer for products that you may be interested in. Um, and then what I did with the sample order was I used the samples to uh, do a lot of my promo before I even launched. Mm, so I knew what I was using. Um, I knew what the products looked like. Um, there was a lot of customization that came after that but I definitely uh, used a lot of my samples to really start to get the message out, to get the word out that I was gonna be doing something. And then once I knew how much I liked the products, then I knew what labs I wanted to go back to and say, hey, can we do this? Can we fulfill an order you know, within this number for this amount? Um, 
within this number for this date because you have to stay on them with dates um, right. to make sure that they're processing them in time to make sure that your um, your logos and branding is printed the way that you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Again, one of the things that really helped me and even the labs that I worked with, the manufacturers would tell me like, we're so glad, like they loved that I was able to send exactly what I wanted my prototypes to look like um, mm -hmm. in graphic design to them because they'll they'll just do anything and right. send it to you and bill you and it is what it is. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, I was able to, you know, take pictures of the samples, use the pictures that I took of the samples to start creating logos that I would use. Um, I would upload the pictures of the logos onto my computer and then um, uh, create logos that I wanted um, to show on top of the prototypes and then send those pictures to the labs so that they could see exactly what I wanted. Um, that was something that was really invaluable. And a lot of times with the labs, um, they will send you a large amount of samples at a really affordable price um, so that you can really play around with the products that you're interested in. And then from there, um, make your determination as to whether or not it's something that you want to continue with. Super interesting. And so you mentioned, you know, you did some initial promo with those samples that, that you got. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how do you even approach selling something <laughs> to your followers, right? I mean, that's something I hear a lot, which is that creators are just scared, right? Like that they're nervous to create something that they sell because they've only ever created content for free, <laughs> right? And so like, what is your mentality there? How did you get past that? Or like, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, Justin, one of the things that I really um, have done um, with my platforms on social media is I've used it to offer things a lot. <laughs> I've made a lot of different offers. Um, prior to launching the Brand Butter Studio, I, like I said, I have a consultancy. And so I worked with um, a lot of different female um, content creators and showed them how to up level their content. And so I, I, I sold that service. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually a actual six week course. I sold that. Um, I've done like small, um, you know, product based businesses and I've made offers with that. And so I, I don't, I don't really have a problem selling things, you know, like I don't, it's not something I'm uncomfortable with. The most important thing for me in selling is to make sure that what I'm offering is what it is. You know, I don't mind offering a product or selling something, but it has to be legit. It has to be awesome or I won't stand behind it at all. And I've, really um, learn the value of gaining the trust of my audience. I'm very, very relatable with them. They send me DMs, I DM, um, DM them back, and I'm really, really intentional about creating an authentic relationship with the people who follow me and are part of my community. And so when this came about, um, many of them have been with me since I first started my wow. journey on social media, and it was pretty much a no brainer. A lot of them have been asking for me um, to get back into the beauty realm. Um, a lot of them had suggested that I start a beauty line. Um, and so when I finally did, it was like a breath of fresh air to a lot of them. Um, and that's their words, not mine. Um, they told me like, <laughs> finally, what was taking you so long? They were really, really happy that I had um, taken the leap and actually launched the company. So honestly, within the first week, we practically sold out of all of our products. That's um, incredible. We've only been in business, like I said, it's been officially, I think it's this week is our seventh week on Saturday. It'll be seven weeks. And I haven't really been promoting because um, Black Friday will be probably like a couple of hours and I'll be completely sold out of everything. <laughs> so it's just been, I think when you pay attention to your audience, um, if you are a content creator, if you're someone who's on social media, trying to grow an out, trying to grow a a brand and also grow a community, one of the most important things that I always suggest is pay attention to your audience. And as much as it is important to share, you know, what you're passionate about, it's also important to really cultivate and um, uh, build upon an audience that actually appreciates things in you. A lot of times for me, my audience is who inspired me to keep going. They spoke life into me. They encouraged me when I was ready to, you know, hang up the camera and put away the laptop, you know, and um, really paying attention to what they said. And then finally finding the time to reaffirm it within myself is really how I found um, it has brought me the most success because they showed me um, what I brought to the table 
long ago um, was the thing that really stuck. It was the thing that helped me to grow my audience. Um, and like I said, life has its ups and downs. I've had some family things happen. I was a caregiver to my mom with lung disease. I got married, we relocated to Texas. Like so many things happen, um, mm -hmm. but my audience has really been the driving force behind the Brand Builder Studio. And that was the reason why I wanted to name it that because I wanted it to be something relatable to all people, all women. Even if you're a brand builder um, and you don't actually do content online, you're still influenced, you still have the ability to influence other people in your day-to-day -day life. Um, and mm -hmm. so the Brand Builder Studio was just a place where I wanted to offer um, products to anyone who considers themselves a brand builder or not. And so uh, it's just been one of those things that I'm really grateful to my audience for um, inspiring me and encouraging me and most importantly supporting um, this journey that I've been on for so long. Super inspirational, Brie. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. How can people follow you or check out the Brand Builder Studio, that kind of thing? Okay, so you can definitely follow me. My um, personal page is XO Brie Knows Best. And then you can definitely follow the Brand Builder Studio. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, and we also have a Facebook account and it's the Brand Builder Studio everywhere. We'll include all the links down below. So make sure to check out all of Brie's stuff. Thanks Thank again, Brie. Thank you. Brie. So I hope you enjoyed the interview. It would mean so much to me if you shared this video uh, with a friend who's also a creator uh, who you think uh, might find it helpful. Uh, and please subscribe, hit that notification bell to be alerted every time I upload a new video. If you have any questions or future video ideas, uh, please leave a comment down below and you are one step closer to becoming a creator wizard. Don't forget, if you want insider tips on how to grow your business as a creator and diversify your income, click the link in the description to join our free newsletter. You'll get exclusive videos, work sheets and insights on the influencer marketing landscape, access to special product discounts, first look at upcoming courses, and more.